Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draw this flamingo. So this is a recent piece which I have just completed as a tutorial for my patrons over on Patreon and also for my people subscribed to my website. So if you're on either platform, you will get this tutorial later on today. So speaking of Patreon, if you wanna follow this along, there is a full six and a half hour tutorial available, as I said, on Patreon and my website. So pop along there and subscribe up if you want to learn how to draw this flamingo um, with the reference, line drawing, all that kind of stuff that's all over there on Patreon for you guys. As always, all the materials that I've used throughout this tutorial are listed in the description below and there are affiliate links of where you can find them as well. So let's get into the flamingo. So the first thing that I did was actually started on the eyes. So the eye on this flamingo was kind of a really, really pale green and it was surrounded by some really dark feathers. So I just added in that eye and then I started to add the feathers around. So again, as I usually do, I used a limited palette for this and I used a combination of the light flesh polychromos pencil and the burnt sienna 10% pencil. I used those as base layers and then I burnished them together and made them really really light with the white pencil from the Caran d'Ache Luminance. So I like to do that so that I've got a really nice smooth layer to work upon when I start to add all of the details and further layers. I like to have a nice smooth light base. So that's why I add that Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil over the top just to blend them and lighten those two layers together. So this flamingo, the head and the neck was actually quite in a lot of shadow and to add the shadows and to make it look as if it was three dimensional and all that kind of thing, I added down a lot of nougat from the polychromos and some walnut brown and dark sepia pencil. So you can see as I'm adding that now, I'm just adding small little areas, mapping out all of those shadow parts within the neck with the nougat and the walnut brown pencil. And then you can see that I've just gone over again with the white pencil, just burnishing it out. And you can see that as I do that, it actually lightens that whole area. So once I've done that and mapped out all of those dark parts, I can then go in and add some of the mid-tone pinks. So some of the pinks that I used for this were some rose carmine or pink carmine from the polychromos, some scarlet red from the polychromos, and also some anthraquinoid pink from the Caran d'Ache Luminance range. Those pencils I found were really, really key for this, as well as a little bit of cinnamon from the polychromos as well. So I had a real mixture of sort of fleshy toned pinks, some really warm pinks, pinks and also some of the sort of blue toned colder looking pinks that one being the pink carmine so the process for this i just added down the base layers of light flesh and the burnt sienna 10 percent just really really lightly layered those with a really sharp pencil on top of one another and then i went in with the white pencil burnished all of that out blended it out so it was really nice and smooth again making sure that i've got quite a sharp pencil to do that with and then I just mapped out all of the darker areas. So on the neck, you can see that the head isn't that dark compared to when you get to the real bend of the neck where it meets the body. The bit that I'm doing at the moment, you can see that it's really, really dark. So I really layered those browns, those nougats, those dark sepias there, just mapped out all of those shadow areas, got every sort of key element in the right place with light layers first. And then I went in with a bit of a harder pressure and subsequent layers and just blended everything together, just made it as dark as it possibly could. I always made sure as well to just take a little step back from my reference photo and compare the areas so I compared the dark areas to the light areas and made sure that those contrasts were right what I was drawing according to that reference photo so every now and then I just made sure that I took a little step back to compare those so moving on to the body feathers and these might actually look a little bit daunting to someone that's just starting out but they're actually really really easy to render so I followed the first few steps of layering those base colours, that light flesh and that burnt sienna 10% and burnishing out with that Caran d'Ache Luminance white pencil. And then I went in with the 
burnt sienna 10 percent once more and also the light flesh and cinnamon polychromos pencils and i just started mapping out all of the shadows that i could see where those feathers are overlapping so you can see that that's what i'm doing now i'm just going in with really sharp pencils just layering really lightly to begin with just mapping out all the shapes and then going in with harder pressure and really reaffirming those shapes and, and really putting them down in colour. So to see the shadows in the feathers, I have to sort of look at the reference photo a little bit abstractly. So I don't necessarily think of the reference photo and the feathers in terms of feathers. I think of everything in terms of shapes and I think of everything in terms of different areas as well. So I look at the reference photo and I see what kind of shapes that I can see and mostly these were triangles and rectangles that I could see. So what I did was just looked at the shape that those darker spaces were making and added those. And I think a lot of people actually call that negative space drawing. I'm not too sure of the term but that's the kind of way that I like to work. Just look at the shapes and the darker areas and not really look at any of the lighter areas. I find that that's the method that really works for me and that's what I used to render these feathers. When you're drawing feathers and a pattern that's quite intricate like this, it's a really good idea to take a break really frequently and that can prevent you from overlooking things and overthinking things and putting things in the wrong places. So if you feel yourself getting a little bit tired, then I would recommend that you take a break, just try and do something else, work on, an, on another piece, work on a completely different texture is what I would advise and then just come back to your drawing once you have fresh eyes and that you feel sort of energized to draw. You can get really lost when you're drawing feathers. I did one or two times drawing this and I just had to take a little back seat, a little bit of a breather and then come back to it with fresh eyes and I found that I had a renewed energy for drawing these feathers and rendering them and blocking in all the shapes and shadows and everything. So next I came on to the really fun part of this drawing and this is the bit that I enjoyed the most and that's adding in these like really scarlety pink feathers where the beak of the flamingo is sort of parting them where it's nibbling itself. So for this I employed the same method of layering those three base colours. So again I layered the light flesh, the burnt sienna 10% and then burnished and blended everything out with that white pencil and then I really had some fun with adding some of the pink tones. So I went in with the pink carmine, the scarlet red, the venetian red that I used here as well for a bit of the shadows and the anthraquinoid pink from the Caran d'Ache luminance. I just layered those up going in gently and with sharp pencils to begin with so just mapping out all of the individual shapes of the feathers making sure that I've got all of the dark places in in the right place and those light places in the right place and then I just went in and just layered and layered until I built up the layers to the relevant shade. So you can see some of the really kind of dark red pinky areas that's where I've gone in with really hard pressure with the scarlet red and then I've gone over the top with a little bit of the dark sepia. So you can see that the sort of darker red tones around the beak, that's where I've gone in with the dark sepia over the top of that red. And then instead of burnishing with a white pencil, I burnished with the scarlet red pencil just to reinforce that red tone running throughout there. So those pink feathers were just built up with very light layers of pink until I got the relevant colour and then some of them, like the ones down the bottom where they're going light again, those ones were just burnished out with a white pencil as well. The beak was another fun part, again, because I think this was a different texture and it involved a few different colours. So the beak actually had a lot of green on the top of it and for that I used the olive green yellowish and I'd, again, I just had a sharp pencil, lightly layered that down and also blended it with a bit of nougat just to darken a few areas. The texture on the beak I added by using a really sharp dark sepia pencil and a walnut brown pencil and I just made a small line so you can see that there are some sort of like wrinkly marks where the beak meets the face where it's sort of on the face there. I just added a few small wavy lines according to the reference photo just looking at that texture, looking at the direction that the lines were going, um, any odd shapes that it was making, I was just mapping those out at the top of the beak there. 
to fill that entire dark area at the bottom of the beak where it's meeting the feathers I just went straight in, didn't add any base layers at all, just went straight in with my dark sepia pencil. I also layered some of the scarlet red in there because there's a slight red reflection on there so I just burnished out a little bit of the red pencil on top just to tie the two areas together so to tie the really dark area through to the red area that it's nestling against. So the next patch that I did was these feathers once more. I used exactly the same technique as the previous lot of light feathers. I just added those base layers down, made sure that everything was smooth by burnishing with the white pencil. And then I went in with some cinnamon and some burnt sienna 10% and just again mapped out those shadowed areas. So all the areas where the feathers were overlapping each other, they're the parts that I was mapping out with the light flesh, the cinnamon, the burnt sienna 10% and then eventually added some nougat to really darken it up. To get that really feathery effect on the side of that really white feather nestling against those scarlet feathers, I just made some small white lines going over and then brought my scarlet red pencil from the scarlet area into that lighter area and just made small lines going into that. So I made like really tiny lines that I would make for doing fur and just brought that into the feather just to break it up make it look like it was sort of segmented and laying over those feathers there. I did also go over that area with a craft knife and I just lifted the colour and if you're interested to know about that technique then I have a video about that and I will link it in the description and as a card up above for you because that's a really interesting technique to be able to lift colour off of your colour pencil pieces. For the remainder of the feathers I just use exactly the same techniques, just putting those base layers down, burnishing them out, making sure they're really really nice and smooth and then going in and mapping out all of the shadow areas. So for this part which I'm doing now I actually had to map out a few more scarlet areas so instead of going in with the cinnamon and the nougat to map out the shadows I just went straight in with the scarlet red, a little bit of rose carmine as well and just mapped those areas out first. So you can see those red areas are sort of doing the same as that large feather which is overlapping those scarlet feathers just beside it. So I needed to use a sharp scarlet red pencil to make those same lines to make it look like those really light feathers were segmented on top of those dark feathers. And again, later on I went over and added some small scratched out white lines with a craft knife as well. So I'm just adding in the shadows, so I used a few different colours here just to add a little bit of variation and a bit more of an orange tone. So I used an orange pencil from the Caran d'Ache Luminance and I also used, used the Madder pencil from the Polychromos as well. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. It's just basically all about looking at your reference photo, finding where all of those shadows are, finding all the shapes and everything, and then just mapping them out on your on your drawing and making sure that you have a sharp pencil and that you go in with light layers and that you really, really take your time when you're layering. It starts off slow at first, but if you take your time and layer gently, you will slowly start to see it come together and then all of a sudden it will just all come together and it will look perfect. So just make sure that you take your time because patience is key when you're drawing realism. But anyway guys, that's it for this tutorial. If you liked this one then please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below of any future tutorials that you'd like to see. Would you like to see me draw another particular bird would you like to see me draw a tiger maybe leave me a comment down below and i'll try my best to work on some tutorials for you guys if you haven't done so already and you're new around here and you like this video then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tick that bell icon as well to be notified of all of my future videos as soon as they're released don't forget to follow me on all of my social media sites i'm on facebook instagram and twitter and i will see you guys in another tutorial bye